And with that, before we go tonight, we wanted to let members of our own NewsHour family, past and present, on camera and behind the camera, pay tribute to Gwen. As you know, she passed away earlier this week. She'll be remembered at services this weekend here in Washington. Personally, I'm the luckiest person I know because I had the privilege of being Gwen Ifill's friend and her sidekick at work. She was like a magnet. People just wanted to be close to her because she instinctively cared about how they were doing. We joked we were like an old married couple. We weren't afraid to say the really important stuff to each other's faces, like you got salad in your teeth, or where did you find those fabulous earrings? As a work partner, she was the ultimate, holding me and everyone else here at the News Hour to the highest standards. Her mantra was, assume nothing. How do you know? I can hear her asking. Boy, do we miss her. There's an empty place in our hearts, but we'll carry on as Gwen would want with a commitment to being thorough, being fair, and to shedding light rather than heat on everything we cover. What I learned from Gwen as a journalist is to never accept the easy answer. There's often another layer to a problem. There's often another motivation uh, driving someone behind an issue. And it's our job to find out what that is. For every story, you need to think about what is the question that's important to ask and why does it matter? No matter how complicated and how fraught the conversations I have with people, Gwen taught me how to listen. Mr. President, you said a few minutes ago There's you broke the a back of professional the ladder in this business, Somalia, but as a journalist of color, what she impressed upon me as a friend and a mentor is that it's not just enough to climb that ladder. It's about making sure that you pull someone else up, and then they pull someone else up along the way. It's no longer an exception to see a black woman who looks just like me anchoring the nightly news, reporting on foreign policy and politics, but that is the norm. Race and gender doesn't define my reporting. It adds to it, it strengthens it. Determined and focused, despite what naysayers may have to say about you and your work. Believe in wonder. She taught me to be bold. She taught me that black women are magical. We heard that there was an opportunity for her to come possibly to PBS uh, to do Question Week, but even possibly uh, be a correspondent on the News Hour. Uh, Linda Winslow, who is then the executive producer of the News Hour, and I had dinner with Gwen, and we talked about her coming, coming aboard as a, as a correspondent, and almost right there, she accepted. And to our new senior correspondent, Gwen Eiffel. Welcome, Gwen. Thanks, Jim. For our preview and, of the Supreme um, Court's there she was, uh, one of us. Uh, she was a superb professional, somebody who who understood the need to be civil, the, understand, the need to be honest, uh, the, under, the need to do your homework, and the need to uh, be tough when required, to be soft when required, and more importantly, always to be yourself, which Gwen always was. Gwen Eiffel was a class act. Everybody who spent any time with her, both professionally and outside the studio, was aware of the fact that she was the consummate professional. Gwen taught me to keep digging, that even when I thought all the questions had been answered in a story, that there were always more questions to ask. To always ask, so what? How does the story affect people across the country? Why should they care? It was to always remember the importance of words the right words at the right time. Top, top yes. secret document. We shared a journalist's passion for explaining to our audience how the world works, but with honesty and care, not cynicism. Most precious of all was her wise counsel, reminding me in tough times to rely on family, friends, and faith. They were the greatest source of Gwen's gusto and joy. Gwen taught me in the more than 30 years we knew each other the value and the power of friendship. What did I learn from Gwen? She reinforced in me the difference a smile can make in someone's day. 
Kindness and curiosity are the best tools that we have to love and to live. Live with integrity and grace all the time. When her strong, compassionate heart stopped beating on Monday, those of us who knew and loved her, her friends and her colleagues and the audience as well, knew that our own hearts had taken a direct hit. She was our inspiration. She was the person who told us that the work we did really mattered. She was a stickler for accuracy, and she was also a fun-loving, life-affirming, deeply religious friend. And I'm going to miss her very much. Gwen taught me that as a woman in a challenging profession, I have a responsibility to help other women succeed. She also taught me to never underestimate the power of a great statement necklace. That leopard print is business casual. She always said, I like your haircut, whenever I got a haircut, and that hair was really important. I learned a lot from Gwen professionally and personally, but I also learned how to let off some steam and the best way to do it is to give a good uppercut to Bozo. Gwen taught me never to call her Gwenny. Many years ago at the dawn of television, some radio comedian said it's easy to make it on TV. All you have to do is fake sincerity. Gwen Eiffel never faked anything. She was always entirely herself. Bold, assertive, confident, professional, and funny. Do you have an opening for a backup scene? Come on, I think I'm you should just saying come on. I could do it. Hey, she made her career, now, the as they used to say in the commercial, the old-fashioned way. She earned it if, on if a road made, made far tougher by her being black. A footnote to this story. I feel that the outpouring of sympathy for her two young death shows how vitally she connected with the audience. But it may also show in this time politically, which feels like a world turned upside down, that she provides an emotional outlet for people who prize the diversity of American society, and in her career, a symbol of the values they want to hold on to. What Gwen taught me was grit, grace, and gratitude, what I call the three Gs. We were doing her last stand-up at the African American Museum, and she basically motored through it, and she <laughs> okay. did what I call, she chose happy. This is an amazing place, chock full of the expected and the unexpected. One she always say, saw the bright spot, even when she wasn't feeling well towards the end. <laughs> Love it. And also, a kind of fun lesson on the road, whether it was a New Hampshire primary or something else, bring red wine and Twizzlers. Gwen taught me to put hot sauce on my eggs. Gwen taught me to pave my own way. To understand people, it's not just having empathy that's enough, but it's really to put yourself inside their situation to understand what they were going through. The sweet spot for Gwen was covering politics. Why is there a disconnect? And we know it was very difficult for her giving that up as she battled her illness in the last weeks. We'll also remember Gwen for that beautiful wide <laughs> smile, along with her devotion to high standards of journalism made her a very special colleague and friend. Part of what Gwen taught me, and this was from watching her at the 2004 vice presidential debate that she moderated with Cheney and Edwards, and she raised the question of the startling high rate of HIV among black women in America. What should the government's role be in helping to end the growth of this epidemic? Neither of them had any idea what she was talking about. And what Gwen taught me in that moment was that bringing uncomfortable truths and facts to people in power is what a journalist is supposed to do. Gwen taught me that you can always find some kind of diversity, a woman or a person of color, to speak on almost any issue if you just make enough phone calls. Gwen taught me that you shouldn't only tell a story with a critical eye, you should want your audience to care. There could be a special relationship between an anchor, reporter, and her crew. And whether it was here at WETA Studios or whether we were on the road doing a Washington Week show or at the conventions, she took care of us and we took care of her. Gwen was a huge fan of the show Hamilton. And there was a line from Hamilton that I can't stop thinking about in the days since her death. It says, legacy. What is a legacy? It is planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. There's a huge gaping hole in our newsroom and in the industry of journalism in general without Gwen. She was one of a kind. 
but she also planted a lot of seeds. She was a mentor, a guide, a friend to a whole slew of younger journalists. She made time in her busy schedule to offer advice, be a sounding board, a cheerleader, an ally. Gwen taught me to trust myself. How to be graceful under pressure. Gwen taught me not only to strive to be good at your job, but also to have fun with it. She's not gonna be replaced. She'll be in our hearts forever. For years, Gwen and I had lunch or dinner nearly every week, a chance to get out of the office and talk. At a certain point, we realized we'd developed a pattern. One of us would start with some problem or minor grievance, something at work or too much work or something like that. The other would listen, go along with it a bit, and point out how petty the complaint was and get us to where we always ended up in those conversations, how lucky we are to do what we do. We took turns doing that for each other. I know she did it for me. It's my turn here, even in great sadness, to say how lucky I am to have known and worked with my friend, Gwen Eiffel. I always had this sort of uh, Eddie Haskell kind of thing with Gwen, I would say, good evening, Miss Eiffel, and good night, Miss Eiffel, and I'm not gonna say goodbye, Miss Eiffel. And Gwen lives on through every one you just heard and so many more. And we have one more tribute to Gwen. Online, our beloved friend and colleague was such a force that a full moon, the supermoon, drew closer to Earth on her last day of life. Please, tonight, tune in for a special Washington Week. It's later on this evening. Gwen's dear friend, Michelle Norris, leads a panel of those who knew Gwen well.